Hey, hey, it's Mega, aka the Art Messiah, here to save you from your art sins. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys if the Samsung Notebook 9 Pro is the best two in one for artists. So, I've used this laptop for uh, about over a little over a year now, and um, from the time of getting the laptop and doing my first review, I've learned some benefits and cons for this two in one laptop. So before I dive into this video, I want to discuss kind of the importance of a two-in-one and why you might want to consider a two-in-one laptop. For me, I like having flexibility with my technology and drawing. With most drawing surfaces and um, technology, you have to be confined to one space and you're kind of always working at a certain desk, so you have your Cintiq there or your Intuos or whatever kind of drawing input device you're using, you know, it's very stationary. So the beauty of a two-in-one is that you can fold this up, you can take this anywhere, you can throw it in a book bag, and that means you can draw virtually anywhere. Okay, so that's one of the, I, one of the situations or scenarios in which you might want to consider a two-in-one. Uh, another benefit of a two-in-one is that not only do you have portability, but you also have variety in what you can do with it. So for this two-in-one laptop, I used it as not only my drawing surface um, to create all the drawings that I do, um, I also do all my video editing on here. I do all my note-taking on here. I do all my scripting for my comic on here. So for me, it's kind of an all-in-one powerhouse in which I can be very mobile and flexible with my workflow, which I really um, enjoy and which I really like. So before I get into the actual performance of the Samsung Notebook 9 Pro, I want to quickly go over the specs of it. Um, with the Samsung Notebook 9 Pro, depending on which one you get, um, you can get a dedicated graphics card, which I believe is the Radeon, or Radeon 4, 540. Um, and you also get an Intel i7 8th gen processor. And if I made any mistake saying that, I'll go ahead and fix it in a caption. Um, so as you can see, very powerful in terms of a laptop and should be able to handle most everything. And in my case, it handled Photoshop, it handled video editing in Adobe Premiere. No flaws there. It also worked pretty flawlessly with um, SolidWorks as well, which is a 3D CAD software for making 3D models for um, engineering parts. So I use this a lot in engineering school as well as with my drawing. And it seemed to be able to handle all of that. And so those are the specs, but I think the most important thing is to actually see how good it is for drawing. Is this going to be a, a tablet in which you feel comfortable drawing and creating content uh, on, which is the more important part of deciding whether or not you, know, you want to purchase this item for your drawing needs. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. And um, we're going to be doing some drawing tests and kind of talk about the pros and cons of the drawing experience and what I've noticed in my own experience. So this artwork that I have pulled up right here, this was drawn on this device. So, you know, it's possible to create really any kind of artwork with some great precision. One thing that I really like about this device is that um, it uses Wacom uh, EMR technology, so the pen that you use with it is um, based on a magnetic uh, response to the screen. So it doesn't actually need a battery, which I love. It makes the pen um, lightweight, portable, you don't have to worry about replacing the battery or the pen going out in terms of power. So. That is pro number one, is that you don't have to have a battery for your pen in order to use this device. So we're going to go ahead and open up a document, um, paper size and 150 
uh, for the, the resolution. And we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. And the test that I'm going to show you guys is the circle test and the line test. I do the circle test to see response time and to see if there's any lag and if it does any weird things when I'm trying to draw a circle. So let's go ahead and try out the circle test. Um, this is a custom brush that I use. Um, doesn't have too much texture to it, so let's see how quickly this runs. Okay, sorry about that. I did not have a color picked. Okay, here we go. So we're just going to go through and draw a bunch of circles really quickly and just kind of get an idea for response time. Um, I'll try not to shake the camera too much so you guys don't hurt your eyes trying to look at this. So very responsive. Um, I'm not getting any weird start or stops really. Really responsive there. Okay. Now let's do a line test. For the line test, I'm going to place two dots and then let's see how well you can get from one dot to another in the accuracy. That was my fault. Okay, so as you can see, it works pretty smooth. And another test that I'm going to do is, okay, well, what happens when you use a textured brush? So that will be the next test that we're going to do. So here's a texture brush at 30, 30 pixels. Again, doing the circle test, you know, a little bit of a lag, but still very small amount of lag. Okay, let's do now the line test again. A little bit of lag, but pretty accurate. And now people like to ask me about the parallax. Um, it is generally um, pretty good and pretty responsive, but you can see how you know it lags behind a little bit when you're moving the cursor. But honestly, when you're drawing, it is really and truly a, a smooth experience. So one thing I want to include that I haven't included in the rest of the reviews is that a lot of drawing tablets is you have um, express keys. And so well, with the two-in-one, how are you supposed to get around that without having a keyboard? So I looked online and I wondered to myself, well, why can't there be like a touch screen express keys? And I came across a software called Tablet Pro, and that's what I just pulled up here to the left. And you can, you can um, assign any key and any value that you want. So say you want undo. So I just hit that, and it undoes it. So you can kind of get around that flaw of not having express keys by using Tablet Pro, which I've enjoyed using within uh, Photoshop and uh, several other programs so that I simply do not need a physical keyboard when I'm in drawing mode, which is really, really, really versatile, um, versatile and really helpful for when you are creating artwork and you need those quick keys to be able to undo and redo artwork. Okay, so overall my experience with the drawing has been um, pretty, pretty good. The, the pressure levels in the screen and the pen, I think it's somewhere in like the 4,000 level. Um, I'll double check that, but it's very responsive. You have pen pressure sensitivity and you also have tilt as well, which is a really cool thing to have, um, especially in the new um, Photoshop versions, you can use um, some of those tilt uh, features as well. So, um, you can enable that. You can kind of see it working. Like if I attack it at different angles, you can see how it kind of changes. Um, but very, very um, smooth drawing experience. Um, really up there with trying to use a Cintiq. Um, and for getting all that 
versatile um, um, features. It is, it is a game changer for me. I can take this anywhere. I can draw anywhere. I can draw in the comfort of my bed. I can draw at a shop. I can draw, you know, just virtually anywhere I can think of now, which is really great. So let me talk about the downsides and the cons of the two-in-one experience. And this is specifically within a, Adobe software. Um, but if you're going to be getting the Samsung Notebook 9 Pro and you want to use Adobe Animate, and this goes for a lot of two-in-one programs or two-in-one um, technologies, is that there can be sometimes mismatch between software and hardware. And this is a case in which it kind of shows up um, and is kind of detrimental to the drawing experience. But I've only had this experience within Adobe Animate. But I will show you this and then kind of wrap up the video um, about what I think of the Samsung Notebook 9 Pro as a uh, drawing tablet for artists out there, beginner and advanced artists. And I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open up um, one of my working files. if it will. And we are going to back this out if I can. And we're going to make all those disappear, make a new layer and a new frame. So let me show you guys what the problems are. Okay. Now we're in Adobe Animate. If we try to do that same circle test, um, the circle test actually works out pretty well. Okay. Now, if we try to, um, let's say, properties, uh, tool, and we reduce the size a little bit. Okay. And let's try to draw something really, 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 really quick. It's actually working a lot better than what it was before. Um, but it also does not have, doesn't seem to have any pressure sensitivity right now for some reason, which it should have pressure sensitivity. And I don't know why it doesn't. Um, I'm in the brush and I'm in the brush settings. It's supposed to have sensitivity and it's also supposed to be able to change sizes. Right now it's not changing sizes. It's kind of giving me a one saw size um, fits all. So anyways, um, you can start to see it kind of show up now. Now that I've turned the um, size down, but there's always this, this line right here. Notice how that the start of every circle, the line tends to be straight. You see that? I'm trying to circle the areas in which this line turns to just being simply straight, and that's really frustrating. The second problem that I've noticed with using the um, pen in Adobe Animate, and it's specific to using the screen as an input device, is that I can't create a small circle. See, I'm pressing down and I want to create a circle, but it won't let me create a circle. You have to make the circle big enough in order for the program to recognize what you're trying to do. Okay? If you try to make a small circle, it just it won't let you. It won't, it, you have to make it at a certain size. So those are my two qualms. I tried this out with an actual Wacom Intuos and I did not have that same issue. So um, I know that there is something with the Windows software that interacts with the um, that interacts with your touch screen um, that has to do with your pen that does not allow you to 
make see even there if you're drawing really fast sometimes it won't read all your lines as well um, so anyways those are the, the few things that I noticed uh, the Windows software kind of messes with your pen technology a little bit within Adobe Animate. I don't really know the reason, um, but if uh, Adobe Animate is the main program that you're using to draw, then just wanted to let you guys know that and that I have been experiencing um, those issues um, with using this pen. So just wanted to throw that out there and that it doesn't exhibit the same issues with like a Wacom Cintiq or a Wacom Intuos because I just tried yesterday. So with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of close up this video with my final thoughts. I think two and ones are great. I really like the Samsung Notebook 9 Pro. It's powerful. Um, it's got its versatility. You can use it as a regular laptop. You can turn it into a tablet. You've got the Tablet Pro to give you those express keys. Um, it's powerful enough to do video editing, powerful enough to run um, Photoshop and animate, and really any program that you might need to run in a, in a creative suite. I also run um, music DAWs, meaning I run all my music software on here as well, and it doesn't really seem to have any issues with that either. Um, so. I, I highly recommend it as an artist tool. Is it perfect? Um, it's not necessarily perfect when it comes to Adobe Animate, but everything else seems to work pretty well. You know, for a drawing surface, it works really well. Um, I think you can pick these up around maybe $800 to $1,000 used right now, maybe a little bit less um, since I last checked. But if you're looking if you're looking to get into drawing and digital drawing, I highly recommend this. And the reason I do is that if you're going to spend money on, let's say, a Cintiq or a uh, Wacom Intuos, you're going to be sinking, let's say, anywhere from like, for something nice, like $200, $400. And that's just for like the drawing part of it. Now you just have a surface and now you need a computer to connect with. So you're going to need a computer anyway. And um, if you're going to need a computer anyway, and that you're going to have to spend, you know, maybe 600, 700, some computers can be really, really expensive. So my opinion and my final thoughts is that you should just get everything in one go. You get the drawing surface, you get, the um, benefit of being able to draw on the screen um, in which you are viewing the content and you have so much uh, flexibility in using this device anywhere and it's got HDMI and USB ports and even a USB-C port so just extremely flexible um, great for you know light gaming as well so if you're looking for something to do art i highly recommend it um, as an artist device and then you have the benefit of using it for whatever else you would like to use it for so hopefully this video has helped you guys um, i wanted to update this video because my last uh, video had very poor audio quality and very poor video quality so hopefully this gives you a better look into this device and i'll be back with another video real soon Peace and love.